Hi, I'm Ruben Saltzman with Structure Tech Home Inspections. Today, I'm sharing with you my top tech tips, part two. So not too long ago, I did my top five tech tips and really it turned into part one because I'm making a part two today. I've come up with so many other things that I've ended up sharing with my team at Structure Tech or other people and I've had enough people tell me, Ruben, you need to do a follow-up. You need to do a part two with extra tech tips. So that's what this is. Now, let me tell you, I am a home inspector type person. I am not a tech geek, but I probably know more than the average person. So I'm sharing with you a bunch of the stuff that I've learned, tips that I have picked up over the years. So this is going to be a longer post than most, a longer video than most. Usually I try to keep them kind of tight, but there's a lot of extra commentary that I wanted to include in this one. So this one, I'm warning you ahead of time, I'm gonna ramble. If you want the nice tight version, you just wanna read my, my newest list, head on over to my blog. I'll put a link right here where you can get to my blog and you can just read the list if you want. Otherwise, number one on the list is a high resolution computer monitor. This is probably the only thing I'm gonna put on this list where I'm actually telling you to go out and buy something. The rest of the stuff is more just software, little tips and tricks that are free, but a high res monitor has been a game changer for me. I got a good friend who is a tech geek, that's Scotty, and he had me look at his high res monitor and I was blown away. I mean, it's the difference between looking at a VHS tape and a DVD, or a DVD and a Blu-ray. There's a huge jump in quality when you go to a high res monitor. Now your traditional monitor is gonna have a resolution of 1920 by 1080, but you jump up to a UHD ultra high definition and it gets you up to a, I believe it's a 3840 by 2160. I think my math is right. Whatever it is, it's twice as many pixels high, twice as many pixels wide, two times two is four, four times the resolution. And it's a stark contrast. It's way better and my eyes are much happier looking at this higher resolution monitor. I can actually make the font on my screen much smaller and it's more comfortable to look at. I can have more stuff open at the same time and you know that that's that's kind of nice stuff to have but really what convinced me to do this is the fact that my screen grabbing capabilities jumped way up. I really increased my game. I do a lot of screen clips. Like let's say I want, I'm doing a blog post from a, a joist manufacturer and they've got a diagram of how their joist hangers are supposed to be installed. I'll take that diagram in their PDF and I'll make it as big as I can on my screen and I'll do a screen clip and then I'll put that in my blog. But I'm limited to the size of my screen. That's the best resolution of a screen grab that I can get. But now that I've got a high resolution monitor, my screen grabs have jumped way up in resolution. So that's the feature that really sold me on doing this. That's what I used to convince myself in my mind, I really need to get a high res monitor. And the one I happen to use is an Acer. I don't remember exactly which model. It's a 28 inch monitor. It's a little bigger than my other two. I've got a three monitor set up here. The other ones are a little bit smaller. I keep the high res one in the middle. I picked it up at Costco for about 300 bucks about a year ago. I didn't do a ton of research to figure out if it was the best one to get. There's tons of them out there. For, for this particular buying decision, I just said, Costco has it, so I'm gonna buy it. And that's kind of my thing. My, my motto is, if Costco sells it, I will buy it. I, I just trust them to have good products and I'm rarely let down. So that's, that's what I've been using. I've had it for a little over a year now. And you know, I spend a ton of time at my computer and I justify the cost by saying, hey look, if I'm gonna spend a dollar a day on a better monitor, and this only lasted me a year, would this be worth it? And the answer is absolutely yes. Totally worth the extra money to have an ultra high resolution monitor. So that is tip number one. So tip number two, follows closely behind that, has to do with screen, ca screen clipping capabilities. I do a ton of screen clipping, like I just said, 
and I like to make it really easy. I've got it set up where I've got this uh, special keyboard. It's got these extra buttons at the top and I programmed it so when I hit a certain button, it pulls up my screen clipper. Now, I discussed this on our podcast not too long ago and we had a podcast listener write in and say, hey, if you're gonna do that, why don't you really up your game and instead of using the built-in Windows snipping device, step it up and get a program called GreenShot. It's a free download, free program for Windows. I think if it's a Mac, it's like $25. It does a lot of the same stuff, but it gives you way more options. And you also have the option to take over the use of the print screen button on your keyboard. And you can, when you hit print screen, it'll open up this program. Now that got me curious and I was thinking, huh, could I have been using the print screen button all along to open Windows snipping tool? And as it turns out, the answer is yes, I could have. And if you wanna do that yourself, all you have to do is open up Windows settings, click on ease of access, click on keyboard, and then toggle on the option to use the print screen button to open screen snipping. That's it, that's all and then your print, print screen button is gonna open that up instead of, you having, instead of you having to go to the menu options on your computer. Next is a Google Chrome plugin called Video Speed Controller. Love this thing. How often do you sit through videos like this one here maybe, and you're thinking, this guy talks really slowly, or this woman talks really slowly, this is just, death and I want to speed this up. If you're watching stuff on YouTube or Facebook, those have built-in speed controllers and you can change the playback speed of the video. But if you're watching some type of educational content, like for me, if I'm taking a home inspection CE class for myself, all of those CE classes, all those videos, they're always locked down. And you can't adjust the video playback speed because they want you to have a certain number of hours of CE. And that, that's just another topic all on its own. But sometimes those speakers are just painfully slow to listen to. But with this plugin, if you're watching any type of video content on a website, it lets you change the playback speed. You just install this plugin called Video Speed Controller and it'll put this, this faint little thing at the top of your video playback where it shows you the playback speed. And normally it just says 1.0. And if you want to speed it up, you hover over it and then you can click on the plus sign to increase the speed of your playback and make your videos playback as fast as you want. My next tip is to use a password manager. How many passwords do you have to keep track of? I just checked my password list. I've got nearly 700 passwords and most people keep track of their passwords by having maybe a simple one for the stuff that's not that important, a medium duty one, and then a really hard one to remember for the really important stuff. And maybe you have some variations of these passwords for different sites, but usually if, if you're gonna have 700, you're gonna have some variation that you can kind of remember and you can know how it works and that makes it crackable. But if you really want to make it more secure, you would use a password manager, something that remembers all of your passwords and it syncs across all of your electronic devices, your, your browsers, your mobile devices, whatever you got, and it makes sure that all of your passwords are long and complicated. So you couldn't remember one of these passwords. And that's the goal. You make one really tough password for your password manager program you turn on two-factor authentication, so you need to confirm the password through your mobile device, you know, maybe with a fingerprint or something, and then it remembers everything. How often do you have to go in and reset your passwords because you forgot what it was and you got to click forgot my password and that all, that all ends as soon as you install a password management system. The one I happen to use is called LastPass. I'm not saying this is the only one to get. There's others out there, there's, uh, there's Dashlane, there's RoboForm. I've heard people say those work well too, but the bottom line is you should get some type of password manager to manage all of your passwords, and it's not expensive. I pay $3 a month 
for LastPass, and it just takes care of everything for me. All of my passwords are long and complicated. Nobody's breaking into anything. Okay, next is online security. Now, you've probably heard this, but it's never a good idea to log into a public Wi-Fi. It's super easy for hackers to get into your devices, steal your passwords, see the data, data that you're putting out there, and you just shouldn't do it. It means if you're at a coffee shop, a restaurant, a hotel, whatever, do not connect your devices to their Wi-Fi. But let's face it, sometimes you just have to, right? I mean, you're at a hotel, you got no service on your mobile phone, it's like, well, you gotta log in. In those cases, if you have to do it, use a VPN. It's, it's called a virtual private network. I don't know exactly how to describe it. I can just tell you it's a piece of software that you install on your device and it helps make sure that hackers can't get, it, get your data. It, it protects you. It encrypts your information. Again, it's called a VPN. I've only used one. I happen to use the one made by Norton. There's tons and tons of them out there. I'm not advocating for this particular one, but make sure that you have a VPN on any of your devices if you're going to log on to a public Wi-Fi. Otherwise, just don't log on to a public Wi-Fi. Next, I wanna talk about some of the features of using Google Photos. Now, a lot of people already use Google Photos. You back up your photos on your mobile device and your computer and whatever else. We know how that works, but something that a lot of people don't know about is the search capability of that. It indexes everybody's faces. Everybody you take a picture of, it'll keep track of their face. And if you take the time to go in and associate, you type in a name with their face, then it's really easy to search for these people in your photos, going back as far as you've archived your photos on Google Photos. But not only does it recognize faces, it recognize, recognizes things too. So let's say I wanted to find a picture of my son fishing. I could type in his name and I could type fish and it's going to show me all of the pictures of him throughout the years where he's holding a fish up in the air. Or if I typed in Cy Saltzman and I typed in tubing, it's going to show me any photos I've taken of him on the lake tubing. It's super handy to try to find exactly the content you're looking for. Next, we've got doodle polls. How many times have you tried to schedule a meeting with a bunch of people or schedule a lunch or something like that where there's a bunch of people involved and it turns into this email chain where people are emailing back and forth like 83 times, no, that doesn't work. How about this day? No, it doesn't work for me. Doodle polls makes this all go away. It's The website is just, I think it's doodle.com and you can create a poll where it gives you, you type in all the dates that work for you, you get a link, you send that link out to everybody that you wanna invite, and then everybody has the option to click on the times that work for them, and you can see what everybody else has voted in real time to figure out meeting times for people. Now, this has saved me a ton of time. I have been using this for many, many years. I couldn't imagine having a scheduled meeting without this, and this feature is also free. So again, uh, doodle, schedule a doodle, we say. And then the last one to share today is for anyone who does Zoom meetings or you record podcasts via Zoom or uh, ba basically any type of audio going out over the internet, there's a super cool program called crisp.ai. Well, it's called crisp. K-R-I-S-P, the website is crisp.ai, and it's an artificial intelligence noise filtering software that removes extra noises. It's, it, it's great if you're doing stuff where you really don't want to be interrupted, and if you got things like clapping or doors closing or you bump your mic, it removes all of that extra noise automatically. And it does a really good job of it. I'm gonna do a quick little demonstration here to show you. Now, for things like ringing cell phones, it's not perfect, but for a bunch of other stuff, it does a really good job. And I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna demonstrate. I'm gonna pause this recording real quick, and then we're gonna, I'm gonna record on my computer mic to do the noise filtering. And I swear, 
I'm not going to do anything funky with this audio because I don't know how. All right, let's give it a shot. So let's try a few examples here. I'm going to clap my hands while I'm talking. I'm going to drop something on my desk. I'm going to open my drawer and close it. I'm going to set my water down hard. So let's try a few examples here. I'm going to clap my hands while I'm talking. I'm going to drop something on my desk. I'm going to open my drawer and close it. I'm going to set my water down hard. That's pretty good, isn't it? I'm impressed. I love this program. I don't use it all the time. I do use it when we are recording our podcasts and you get 240 minutes free every week and it just kind of sits there in the background. So again, crisp.ai, love this for meetings where I really don't want the, those extra noises coming in. Okay, that wraps up my top tech tips part two. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.